Hello, today we're in my garage near the hot water heater because we're going to be speaking about how I got a hot water recirculating line back up and running. It had been taken out of service by a previous owner. Um, so I'm not going to be showing all of the soldering and the cutting and all of those details. Um, if that's what you're looking for, maybe look elsewhere. Um, but uh, what I'll be doing is explaining how I first confirmed that I did have a hot water recirculating line, the pump selection, the pump that I selected, um, how I installed it and how I'm controlling it. Um, so uh, I'll try to divide this up into chapters so that if you're only interested in one particular point, you can navigate to it fairly easily. Um, but otherwise, I uh, hope it's useful to you. Here we go. So soon after we moved into this house three or four years ago, I noticed this valve, old valve down the side of the hot water heater. Um, I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe it's some kind of drain valve. Um, I was uh, uh, reluctant to open it in case it didn't close again properly, etc. We had to have uh, our hot water heater uh, rep replaced about a year ago, um, and the plumber who came in looked, took a look at that and said, oh, it looks like you have a hot water recirculation line. That was good news for me because uh, we've been having uh, waiting up to three or four minutes for hot water at the far end of the house to arrive to the faucet. Um, so I thought, okay, let me verify that and uh, maybe I can get this hot water recirculation line working. So I, dra I switched off the water, um, opened the valve, uh, cut off the end, uh, drained it, cut off the end of the pipe, um, soldered a new fitting on there and fitted a new ball valve. So I connected the plastic pipe to the valve a bucket and ran it to verify and uh, after a couple of minutes hot water started to come out so I thought okay fantastic uh, this is the hot water recirculation line so it was time to decide how to hook the thing up and get it working so I got to exploring the uh, type of pump that I would install um, a lot of the uh, if you put in hot water circulating pumps you get a lot of uh, information on stuff like uh, and Grunfoss is quite a big uh, manufacturer you'll find them at Home Depot and Lowe's and all of those things but uh, there's one thing you've got to be very careful about like look at the flow rates on here see here US 12 GPM 29 GPM this one's only 2 GPM and then 6 so you find see this one here uh, this is a typical hot water circulating pump but see the max flow is 6 US GPM well here's the thing if I go over to here and I put in uh, this is a calculator that's very useful it tells you for the nominal pipe I've got a half inch line so you know yours may be three quarters or I don't know how big it is um, but anyway I had a half inch line so if I put in that one from this pump at 6 GPM look at this um, hot water velocity limit for copper is 4 to 5 FPS feet per second look at this 9.8 that's almost double the recommended maximum um, why is it recommended? Because um, if you, the higher you go in the speed in feet per second, the more it's likely to wear away the inside of your copper pipe. So you've got to be careful with this. Uh, if you just go out and buy any old pump, um, if you can put out uh, six, in this case, six GPM, which was this one here, this is like a plug, looks like a plug and play. It has the plug on it, um, it and it's specifically made for, um, it says, here, delivers hot water instantly to all faucets in private homes, uses a bypass valve, blah, blah, blah. That, that looks great on the face of it, but that 6 GPM is kind of scary because it's uh, double the recommended uh, flow rate. So I quickly decided that what I needed was something more like this at 2 US GPM max. Um, if I go back to the calculator again and I put in, uh, let's say, 4 GPM, see that's still too high three okay i'm right just under the limit there 4.9 if i go down to 2 gpm 3.27 feet per second i like that one because it was below four um, and the recommendation is four to five feet per second if you remember uh, see here four to five so i i decided i wanted to limit mine pump to have a maximum of two gpm it means that maybe the loop when it's cycling the water might uh, not heat up quite so fast but I 100% I, I, I wanted to uh, avoid any chance 
of eroding away any of my copper pipe or fittings. So having decided that I wanted the uh, low flow, the 2GPM model, <clears throat> I started looking at uh, a couple of the different options that are available. So the Grundfos that we were just looking at, um, this is the literature, by the way, you can download it if you look on Home Depot or you can go to the Gould's website. Um, but just to see here the different options. So they've got here a, a little table with control mode um, and the different models. Comfort is continuous. Comfort T has temperature control. TDT has temperature control and a timer. And then this TA has what they call auto adapt and temperature control. Um, and it can be on continuously. Uh, the auto adapt is supposed to learn your patterns of usage during the day. Um, some people like that, but I've also seen on some plumber forums that uh, not everybody's keen on this idea. Um, but uh, if you like the, the idea that it's going to learn your uh, usage patterns and try and follow them, then uh, that one might be interesting for you. Um, what I was interested in was the temperature control specifically, um, because the, uh, so that would be the Comfort T, uh, because it pretty much does this. It, uh, it follows the water temperature and when the water temperature drops to a certain temperature, it'll come on and heat it up um, and maintain it basically between that, maintain it hot. Um, so I decided I was going to use a smart switch so, so I could use an app um, to turn the pump on and off. And then during the periods that it's on, say between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. in the evening, for example, um, it would stop and start automatically to control the temperature, keep it within that temperature band. Um, and these are adjustable. So I decided I wanted that, but I wasn't going to go with the auto adapt and I didn't want one running continuously. Um, so the Goulds, they have, uh, the Grunfoss, excuse me, has that uh, model. Uh, the, I also found the uh, Goulds pump, also uh, somebody on a forum said that they'd installed one of these and they were very happy with it. Um, they have the very similar thing, the, 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 the pumps look similar um, and they have a bunch of different controls. So here, again, in their literature that you can download, um, I'll put the website in the uh, description. Um, you can see here all of the different options, but as far as controls, um, they offer variable speed or fixed speed. Um, they also have a dry run function. That's really only for commercial stuff. Um, but then they offer, so uh, not only they, they have variable speed, they also have temperature control with or without temperature control and built in timer, etc. So uh, they have very similar models. So the final step was to decide where I was going to buy these. Um, so you can see here, um, I actually decided to go for the, uh, the Gould's Lang E series. Um, you can see here at Home Depot, um, this one here, uh, it's what I was looking for. It's the non-timer um, circulating pump and it has an adjustable thermostat. That's the one that stops starts with control, controlling the temperature. And it's only half, it's a half inch union, which was perfect because I've got a half inch size pipe. Um, if yours is a little bit bigger, if you've got a bigger recirculating line than half inch, maybe you'll look at one of the other models. Um, but anyway, um, this is where I downloaded the uh, product literature. But you can see here, so 367 bucks. Uh, then I found uh, almost on, a, on an internet search that uh, there was a vendor at Walmart selling it on the Walmart uh, marketplace for 272. So that's uh, almost 100 bucks cheaper. Um, uh, Lang exactly the same thing. BCU FN RNW. Same thing here. BCU FN RNW. Um, so they were called Buddy Wholesale. I'd never heard of those. So I did some uh, research to find out if they were you know, a reputable supplier. Um, it seems like they have warehouses. I think it's on the East Coast in one of the Carolinas. Um, so they, they have a, a US warehouse. And uh, on their website, um, you can see they stock a bunch of different variants of this type of pump with, uh, but the particular one I was looking at was this one, uh, BCU FN RNW. This is the one with the thermostat, 257 bucks. So that's $100 cheaper than uh, uh, Home Depot. Um, so I ordered it directly from this place. Um, they've got 21 of those in stock right now. Um, of course, the, um, the Comfort series, the, the Grunfoss ones, which are equivalent, um, you can buy those at various places, probably through Home Depot and whatever. I didn't look around for those 
so much, but the price range is about the same. Um, I don't think that this uh, Buddy Wholesale actually sells the Grunfoss, um, but if that's the one that you decide to go for, then uh, just do a deep uh, search online. Um, so uh, that was it. I uh, purchased the pump, it arrived, and then uh, now I'll deal with uh, uh, an overview of how I installed it. So following the instructions from the pump manual, um, I installed the valve just on the inlet that we saw earlier. Um, here's the pump. Um, and then I put this valve in here because um, in order to control the flow, I'll go into that in a little bit later. Um, and then following up to the top with the uh, vent valve on the top, across and into the cold water inlet. And then you can just about see back there Right there is a check valve uh, on the cold, where the cold water is coming in, the uh, heater. So now to speak about um, the valve that I installed on the outlet of the pump. Um, I put a, a stop valve there in order to reduce the flow, and here's why. <coughs> when I started the pump, um, the first time I'd installed it, there was a, like, ringing, tinkling noise coming from the outlet of the pump. Um, and I'm pretty sure from my experience with pumps elsewhere that that uh, is related to cavitation. Um, cavitation is where little bubbles build up. You can find out about it online, but it's basically it's bad for the, the life of the pump. So I heard this tinkling sound, um, uh, so I decided to put in this valve. What the tink what I believe was happening is um, on, a, uh, on any kind of a pump, if you get down here, this is the pump curve. So what we have across the bottom here is this is the flow rate. Um, and then this is the uh, pressure or the outlet head as they call it. Um, so uh, what I believe was happening with mine was I was close to or beyond the maximum because everything was wide open. There was no restriction on the outlet. And I think that the um, head pressure, the back pressure that of trying to move the uh, water uh, through the outlet and into the hot water tank was not enough um, to uh, restrict the flow. So what the valve does is, as you close the valve, it moves, I hope you can see my uh, cursor here. As you close the valve, it builds the pressure up so and the flow reduces. So obviously, what, as you close the valve, you reduce the flow. So what happens is you get the, the flow at, at the bottom here on this begins to uh, reduce. And that takes the pump up this line here, up this curve, and all the way up until the once the pump is finally closed at zero flow, um, that's the the far end of the, of the curve. So if you're too far, uh, flowing too much liquid or not enough, you can have what they call is cavitation, which is bad for the uh, the life of the pump, as I said. Um, so anyway, so I put that valve in in order to uh, throttle the flow, slow the flow down. Um, and uh, uh, get rid of this uh, cap this potential cavitation problem. I'm not 100% sure if it was cavitation, but I put it in just as uh, an additional uh, safeguard. And what I did find is once I closed the valve down a little bit, the tinkling noise uh, went away. Um, so I think I, I was probably like uh, way over here at the maximum flow, and I've just brought it back a little bit by closing that valve down a, a bit, and now the pump seems to be much quieter. Um, so it, now when it runs, it just hums. There's no additional noise. Um, so that, that's uh, the reason for the outlet valve on that I, the extra valve that I put on the pump. So finally, um, how to control the pump. As I mentioned earlier, I bought the uh, model of pump as the integrated thermostat. So it controls the temperature uh, what every, uh, what, while it's uh, switched on. But in order to switch it on and off, um, I decided to go for a smart uh, outlet or a smart indoor plug. Um, so I just plugged this into the outlet in the garage, uh, plugged the uh, pump into it, um, and I can control it via an app with all the usual things. Um, it does have a local power button to switch it on and off, and you, it also has an, uh, an LED to show that it's got a Wi-Fi signal. But anyway, this is what I picked. Um, uh, you know, 
do your own research. Um, but uh, this unit, I've had it running now with the pump um, for nearly a year. Uh, everything works great. Very happy with it. So there you go. I hope you uh, got something useful for this from this video and good luck with your installation.